Today, Apple has officially launched Apple One, despite Apple Fitness Plus still not being ready yet. But yeah, 30 day free trials are available across the board. They start out with the individual plan at 15 bucks a month and they scale all the way up to 30 bucks a month with Apple One Premiere. And I'm here to tell you today to be careful, ladies and gentlemen, and watch your wallets and try to track your finances a little bit better because this is how Apple is planning on profiting off of you for the long term. Let's begin. I know some of you might expect me as the Apple sheep to get really, really excited about Apple One because we can all save money and sign up for all of Apple's great services at once, but I have honestly been trying to get out of a lot of subscription services, not just Apple's, but clearly in the past I have subscribed to a lot, whether it be two terabytes of iCloud storage or Apple Music, which in the moment felt like small expenses because eh, it's only 10 bucks a month here, maybe five bucks a month here, and that's the whole point. That's why this business pitch is so successful successful and what Apple is trying to capitalize on is trying to get you to look at the short-term cost not the long-term cost because if you start looking at how much you're gonna be spending per year and how much of that you don't even get to keep you're just kind of renting access to certain software it's dangerous and especially with bundles like Apple one it will convince you that because you're saving money you better just keep paying for it and if you're not utilizing one or two of the services that are included in your bundle you start to say, well, you know, I get it at a discount anyway, and having to cancel my bundle and have to resubscribe to everything individually, not that big a deal. And they get those few dollar amounts lower and lower because you start visualizing it as, well, it's only an extra three bucks a month to go with Apple One, or it's only an extra five bucks a month to go with Apple One. But that little $3 or $5 additional subscription ends up costing you an additional $60 a year, and you get so comfortable with it, you get so used to having it. And companies know about this. There's a whole mental aspect to getting someone to subscribe to something that is very, very hopefully different than getting someone to buy an item outright and to keep it. And Apple knows in the long term, iPhones are going to get smaller and smaller when it comes to upgrades. And there's going to be less and less reasons to buy the new iPhone every year, which is why Mr. Tim Cook, who is very smart, mind you, I'm not criticizing his business strategy here. He's very wise to try to convert Apple into a services company, which is why a Across the Apple Store now, you see everything listed as a monthly price instead of a upfront price. Well, no, 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 that Apple Watch band is at $100, just, just a few bucks a month. It's really not that much because for a business, the smaller price tag they can throw in front of you, the better. And there's also a whole different mental process that people have to go through to cancel a subscription, which companies have found consumers are much, much less likely to look at a bank account statement, see a monthly charge and go, oh, you know, am I really using that that much? Well, you know, I guess I didn't use it that much this past month, but since I've already paid for it, I guess I'll keep utilizing it. And the whole success of the business subscription is getting people to forget that they're subscribed to it and counting on people not watching their wallets, not looking at their monthly income. And before you know it, you've dropped hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on services that you don't even get to keep if you end up canceling them. Part of the reason I decided to back out of Apple Music this year was because I realized I've been paying hundreds of dollars a year for the subscription for the past five years and would I have spent $500 worth on iTunes music if I was not subscribed? I don't know, but part of me says no. Part of me was looking at my recently added music and realizing maybe I'm not really enjoying $10 worth of new music every month. And again, you can build up your Apple Music library as much as you want, but as soon as you cancel that subscription, it all goes away. You don't get to keep any of that. So the infinite price of your library keeps growing month after month after month. You're still paying for it. And the same thing is going to be true with Apple TV Plus. There may be movies or shows you like on there and you may keep paying for it because five bucks a month doesn't feel like a lot and you keep paying and paying and paying but now you start realizing that that show or that movie that you really enjoyed on TV Plus is going to end up costing you $50 a year or now $100 after two years. To some of you the shows may be worth it. It's very subjective. My goal here is not to say you know no one should subscribe to Apple One. My encouragement here is to look at your monthly expenses and to make sure 
sure that whatever services you're utilizing or planning on utilizing from Apple One, you are 100% going to use and continue to use and utilize for a long time. I personally will not be subscribing to it because I just can't justify so many of those services. It's kind of the same situation with Apple Arcade. I really enjoyed my free month trial. There was a few games I liked on there, but you know, that quickly turns into 50 or $60 a year for some of those games you enjoy. And it's like, yeah, they're fun, but after five years or so, it means you've dropped $300 worth on just a few of those games you like. And Apple News Plus, I have the most hardest time understanding because news is not super exclusive anymore. You can keep up to date with all kinds of things across different websites, and so many news sites are free these days. It's not like that News Plus subscription is going to give you access to information that you can't find elsewhere. It really just comes down to curated writing by certain journalists and moving pictures as you're scrolling which they're charging you 10 bucks a month for, which again, quickly can scale up all the way to $100 a year. And by combining all of these services into that Apple One bundle, it doesn't seem like a lot. I know, at first glance, 15 bucks a month doesn't seem like much, but Apple knows as soon as you start subscribing to some of these services, it is incredibly hard, incredibly difficult to get you to unsubscribe. I know because it was really, really hard for me to work down my iCloud storage to under 200 gigs. I've been paying for two terabytes of iCloud storage for the past few years and I'd just gotten so comfortable with it and I'd just gotten so used to it but then I started realizing all of these photos and videos of my family and my friends and my experiences are now being held ransom essentially behind this $10 a month subscription and in time I was eventually going to fill up that two terabytes of iCloud storage and I was going to have to sort through all those photos and videos and figure out which ones I want to keep which ones I want to delete and which ones I want to keep offline or back up somewhere else for cheaper so it was only a matter of time that I was going to have to go through this process so I just realized, you know what, instead of paying 10 bucks a month and eventually having to spend several weekends trying to sort through my photo library, I'm just going to do it now while it's smaller and downgrade my iCloud storage so that I can save 7 bucks a month, which, you know, adds up over time. It ends up being closer to 80 bucks a year. And now I'm downgrading to 200 gigabytes of iCloud storage. There's still some of it I use for work-related stuff that I wasn't able to cut out, so I'm not going straight down to zero or 50 gigs of iCloud. Sorry, I'm not that poor. But still, either way, I think that there's a lot of monthly expenses where Apple, and especially this new Apple One bundle, is going to be chipping away at your bank account little by little. And it may not feel like a lot at first, but over time, it really does stack up. And I encourage you guys to really figure out what you're paying for, where your money's going, and be careful about it. Because Apple One is going to try to make that pitch that you're saving money and that this is going to be better for you. And in reality, there's a good chance you're not going to be utilizing these services to their full potential. In in fact, Apple's kind of counting on that. And you know, now I've already seen some people be like, hey, I can get four terabytes of iCloud storage if I pay for the $10 a month of two terabytes, and now I start paying for Apple One Premiere for an additional $30, together I get four terabytes. So in the end, you're just delaying that inevitable issue of filling up your iCloud storage. It may just be a few years away, it could be 10 years away, but eventually you're gonna be dropping all this money, $40 a month to have all that storage, and it'll be really convenient for a while while, but eventually it's going to fill up and you'll have two options. Either have to go through everything and start deleting stuff and getting rid of certain memories and keep paying 40 bucks a month, or, you know, Apple will have something else in 10 years that will cost more, and now you'll be paying $60 a month because that's where all your family photos and all of your precious memories are. So you don't want to cancel that, do you? Because then you would lose all of your precious memories. And I hate that mindset. I hate that business pitch that's like, well, keep paying us or else you lose your childhood. There's a lot of subscriptions going out there right now. And the reason so many businesses are moving towards that model is because it works. They're gaining money off of you and they're counting on you forgetting that you're subscribed to it and they're counting on you not utilizing those services to their full potential. So please be careful, you know, to those of you who are absolutely getting it no matter what. I just hope you're in decent financial situations and I hope that you keep your eyes peeled on where your money is going and making sure you're not spending money on something that you're not truly utilizing. Especially even that Apple One individual individual plan, which might be the best deal out there because, you know, 15 bucks a month and you get these things that together add up to much more than that. But keep in mind that those other individual services have annual options. So if you go with Apple Music annually, it's $100 a year instead of 120 And if you go with Apple TV Plus annually, it's $50 a year instead of $5 a month, which together, if you do the math on that, actually ends up saving you money. It may not be a lot because it's only $12.50, but again, 
again, this is the tiny incremental dollar and cents upgrade they're hoping to get you on. Well, it's only two and a half dollars more to go with Apple One individual. And then over time, they could decide to increase it and you'll feel like, well, I've always had Apple Arcade, so why would I cancel it? I have all this progress in these games and I'm just telling you guys, look out for yourself. Anyways, this is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.